You know, from the early 1970s to the early 1980s, there was a lot of anthology drama shows which really took a chance at syndication and network audiences because Night Gallery did well from about 69 to probably 72 or 73. Uh, too bad that for the last season, a half-hour episode was bombed. But, uh, you know, it drew a lot of interest. Now, this was quite interesting because the name of the series... Not say it was grammatically incorrect, but it was called Orson Welles' Great Mysteries. And yes, it featured Orson Welles. Now, this British TV series was really transmitted between 73 and 74 on ITV, uh, produced by Anglia or Angelia. The series is an anthology of mystery stories featuring a wide range of British and American actors. Each episode is introduced by the master himself, the only regular actor in the series whose appearance were confined the introductory and closing sequences. Now the episodes were 25 minutes, so it was a quick it was a quick watch, sort of like uh, House of Mystery comic books, uh, you know the, the DC and Dell uh, uh, horror imprints. Now in the opening titles, he appears to show in silhouette, walking through a hallway towards the camera, smoking a cigar and outfitted in a broad brimmed hat and a huge cloak. When he actually appears on screen to introduce the episodes, his face is all that is shown an extreme close-up and very low lighting. And again, very, uh, you know, very dramatic. Now, the pilot or the first episode uh, really stands out for a lot of people. It's called Captain Rogers. Now, this one, the respectable owner of a quite inn in 18th century England is blackmailed by, by a grubby stranger who knows he's secretly the n- notorious pirate, Captain Rogers. Now, this featured Donald Pleasant's Joseph O'Connor. Beautiful. And, of course, the second episode, The, the Leather Funnel, starring the great Christopher Lee and Simon Ward. In this one, the young man talks with the uncle of the girl he wants to marry, as he told a strange story about a curious funnel made of leather. While falling asleep next to the device, he has a presentiment that it was once used as an instrument of torture. Now, this is, of course, based on the the, uh, the Herald story by Arthur Conan Doyle. Conan Doyle. Now, episode three, A Terribly Strange Bed with Rupert Davies, Colin Baker, and Edward Albert. This one uh, features um, a gambler who sh- should have left the casino at the right time, but uh, uh, <laughs> evil happens. So other episodes include uh, Le Grand Bretèche with Peter Cushing, Susanna York, uh, and I would love to, love to see them in more parts at the time. The Dinner Party with Joan Collins and Anton Rogers. Money to Burn with Victor Bueno, uh, an Oscar-nominated actor. Uh, number seven in the confessional uh, Academy Award winner Jose Ferrer and uh, Milo O'Shea. Dean Stockwell shows up in Unseen Alibi, episode eight. Uh, other key uh, episodes uh, Ingenious Reporter uh, featuring David Burney. Now, I watched this one, that's one of my favorites. This one was an ambitious reporter, Harry Langry, pretends to be the murderer of unidentified women to boost sales with a special report from prison. But once arrested, the authorities seem to be convinced that he's indeed the killer because the victim has been uh, identified as his fiance. Now, Death of an Old Fashioned Girl featured the beautiful Carol Lindley. Jack Cassidy was in For Sale Silence. The Inspiration of Mr. Bud with the Great Hugh Griffith. Uh, then An Affair of Honor. Farewell to the Faulkners with, Kevin, uh, with Keith and Jane uh, Baxter. Uh, 18, The Power of Fear with the beautiful Shirley Knight backed by Don Murray, who recently passed away. Richard Johnson is in Where There's a Will, A Time to Remember with Patrick McNee, which got a lot of uh, award buzz. Ice Storm with Claire Bloom and Robert Beattie. Uh, uh, the Come Into My Parlor with Ann Jackson and Dana Winter. Eli Wallach shows up in Compliments of the Season, one of the few times Eli would show up on episodic television. Now, this one is quite interesting. This features a British billionaire spoiled little girl who loses her rag doll, and buying her new one does not make her happy. So the parents uh, put on an ad for a 25-pound uh, uh, return award for the doll. Having been buried by the family dog, the doll is found by a drunk or tramp who takes it to the pub, pretending it is a high-class lady to the amusement of the audience. Two little lives frequent the pub realize the doll is worth money and force the tramp at knife for him to return it, planning to take the money from him later. But he's uncanny knowledge of the paintings of the house and presses the lady of the house long enough that she has him driven home by car, so he avoids the robbers. Now, under suspicion, trial for murder with Ian Holm. 
And of course, the last episode was The Furnished Room, uh, starring Irene Worth. This one, a young man's month-long search for a missing girl, ends in a haunted room of a boarding house. Now, the whole plot's, like I said, Alfred Hitchcock uh, presents in a little bit of Twilight Zone, a little bit of Night Gallery. Now, uh, ironically, Wells' introductory sequence was eventually parried by Benny Hill as Orson Buggy in an episode of the television program. Now, the home media rights of the series are held by ITV. In 2019, Network released half of the series on Region 2 DVD as Volume 1 in the UK, while Volume 2 was released on October 26th. I don't know about a U.S. Uh, cap- capacity DVD, but like I said, it's well worth to look at. I think it's on certain streaming services, but if anybody knows where you can find it, uh, let me know. So, ladies and gentlemen, again, uh, a great effort. But uh, I don't remember this being shown on Canadian syndication, unless the uh, you know the uh, Ontario and West Coast uh, CTVs and independents would have shown it. But like I said, you had a good, good uh, group of characters. And I don't think it was shot under cheap, but I don't think it cost too much either. But like I said, if you watch the series, let me know what you think of it and what was your favorite episode. Have a good one. Bye.